Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you this fine day? Me? I'm feeling pretty good. Today in growing your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers, a slight departure from our normal conversation. I'm not going to talk so much about our channel itself, but instead I want to talk today about our email, our autoresponder system, uh, how you gather uh, your leads outside of YouTube, because there's some really important uh, there's some really important changes that have happened, especially here in Canada, that regardless of where you are in the world, you should be aware of, and it gives us time to also stop and take a look at that whole that whole vertical that whole vertical aspect of our email autoresponder, our newsletter, and how we reach out outside of outside of YouTube. Uh, but before we begin, we have one little change to this vlog, to growing your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers. You might've noticed that there was no ad at the beginning and I am bringing this to you ad free from now on. Actually, it's not so much me bringing it to you ad free as you are bringing it to you ad free because it's through the support of Patreon that we can now strip all advertising out of this particular channel. No more irritating lower ads and no more irritating pre-roll ads. Instead, there's just irritating Steve mentioning that if you aren't yet a Patreon supporter of the Dotto Tech channel, well, by gosh, you probably should take a look and see what Patreon is all about. I'll put the link up right here. You can take a look at your leisure, but basically Dotto Tech is brought to you by you and most especially this vlog is now brought to you by you so for as little as a dollar a month you can ensure that Dotto Tech continues that I can keep bringing you this great content and I cannot have to rely on AdSense advertising in order to bring it to you bonus all right let's dive into today's topic because we are going to be talking a lot about uh, the anti-spam laws that have come forward in Canada and are just enacted now. Now, I know that you might be going, oh, that's not interesting to me, Steve, because I don't live in Canada and I don't do that much business with Canadians. So it doesn't matter. It's important because not only is it uh, relevant if you have just one subscriber in Canada to any of your, to any of your uh, channels, but increasingly I think that this idea uh, of how the Canadian government is treating uh, unsolicited email and that sort of stuff is going to is going to be uh, picked up by other by other jurisdictions around the world. So it, it's 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 worth exploring. Now let's take a step back though. Why are we talking about email autoresponders in a YouTube channel when we're talking about growing our YouTube channel? Because YouTube is a social media platform like Facebook, and I believe that regardless <clears throat> of how you're building your audience that one of the goals of your channel should be to take your biggest fans, the people who support you, who enjoy your content, who, who, who view it on an ongoing basis, and not necessarily move them out of YouTube or Facebook, but make sure that you capture them in another system other than YouTube or Facebook. The reason is Facebook and YouTube basically own your subscriber or own your follower. They have total control over it. If they, for some reason, delete your account, you're gone. If there is an issue and they, they, uh, uh, they don't want you reaching out to them in the future or they change the rules about how you engage with them, you then lose the opportunity to engage with those followers or fans. If, however, you migrate them in and get them to opt in in a newsletter or a mail list of your own, then they are an asset of your venture. That's the goal we all need to undertake. So since I started my YouTube channel, I've been steadily growing a new email newsletter list. Now, I had an existing uh, email list, which is pretty good size, uh, which I continue in a different application. I use a, a different application, but I started a brand new AWeber list when I started growing my YouTube channel. And so the YouTube channel right now, as of today, we're sitting at 28,000, 29,000 subscribers. And my email list uh, in AWeber of getting people to opt in based on the new channel is sitting at around 4,000. It's growing nicely. Uh, it's been steadily increasing. But I've made sure that every time that I enroll anybody in my AWeber account, that each of those subscribers is doing what's called a double opt-in. In other words, they are entering their, their information, their email information and their name in a field, in an opt-in box, and then they're having to respond to an email that's sent to confirm that opt-in. And the reason that I'm doing that is I want to make sure that I have 100% permission from everybody that I'm reaching out to on this list because I don't want to get caught in any spam laws. I don't want to be accused of being a spammer and I certainly don't want my account being deleted or being marginalized because uh, of complaints against me with spam. And regardless of how careful you are, this is the thing that drives 
<laughs> drives a lot of email marketers crazy. Uh, regardless of how careful you are, and I've done that with this list from the beginning, look, you still get complaints. If I look in my last email that was sent out, I had actually one person complain in a, uh, in a newsletter that I sent out saying, this is spam. And they had to opt in. They had to acknowledge the opt in. And there's an unsubscribe at the bottom of each and every email, yet they still, the odd person is going to complain. We want to avoid those complaints wherever possible. And why do we want to avoid those complaints? Well, one reason is this. The Canadian, the Canadian government is changing spam laws dramatically. And they are basically protecting Canadian citizens against unwanted email. Uh, and they are levying some incredibly steep fines to any enterprises that don't, that don't follow and don't, and, and try and spam basically Canadians. And the definition of spam in Canada is far more focused than you might be comfortable with. If people have been opting in on your list, like a lot of us in the past, for example, let's take a look. Uh, let me jump into my, I've got, uh, there it is, Webinar Jam. I've been using Webinar Jam to enroll people in webinars, in free webinars that I give. We all do this kind of thing. And part of that is they give you email address in order to register for the webinar. A common practice is at the same time as you capture them for that webinar is to link this enrollment to your autoresponder and automatically enroll them as well in your email newsletter. If you do that, the people will not have, they, they might think that they're only enrolling in the webinar and not enrolling in your newsletter. And they might consider that the newsletter that you send them that's following on, adding them to that mail list, is you spamming them. And they always have an option to unsubscribe. I mean, we all do that. But if they in Canada start complaining and put you on the list, then the Canadian government is going to take a good hard look at you and consider levying fines, which for individuals can reach a million dollars and for corporations can reach $10 million. Now, if you think, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't live in Canada. I never visit Canada. There's nothing that they can do. Well, think again, because Facebook thinks that. They, uh, they specifically state in their, in their terms of service that any lawsuits brought against them have to be brought in the state of California. Yet in Canada, in British Columbia, there's currently a class action lawsuit coming up against Facebook, which specifically is suing Facebook for that misguided uh, path that they took a few months back, where if you liked a company, they would take your picture and post it in your friend's feed saying, Steve likes so-and-so company, which they've stopped doing. But the fact that they did that for several months means that they're now being sued in British Columbia, where I live. Uh, and the Supreme Court has said, yeah, we can sue you here, Facebook, because you do business in Canada. As soon as you take nickel one from a Canadian, basically you are now kind of, you are exposing yourself to, uh, to our legal system. So Maybe Canadians aren't as friendly as the rest of the world thinks we are all of the time. But for you and I, for people who are building our business online, this is a very relevant consideration to move forward in. So what do I recommend you do? Well, I'm just exploring it now. I'm just kind of getting into it. I think if you uh, pay attention, I'm hoping to put on a webinar with some real experts on the, on the topic coming up in the not too distant future. It'll probably happen towards the end of the summer. But in the meantime, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I am a, whenever I'm putting on a webinar, I'm not double opting in people right away. I'm not putting them onto my mail list. During the webinar, I'll make a call to action saying, hey, if you want to stay in touch with me, sign up for my newsletter here because you aren't going to get my newsletter as a part of this email. Uh, so I'm doing things like that to make sure that I'm in the clear. When I see, when I go into my Aweber account, let's just take a look. I want to show you my subscribers here. This is, if, if you're ever accused of spamming, you're going to have to come up with information like you can get from, uh, Aweber, MailChimp, all of them basically create a digest that talks about all the times that you've contacted that person and also when they verified and when they subscribed to your newsletter. And if you can show that you also have in the bottom of every newsletter and unsubscribe, you will not, I guess that's going to be your ultimately your legal defense. Hopefully it's never going to come to this if you follow the best practices, but this is the information that they're going to want. So they're going to want to know that the person verified, the, the government's going to want to know that. And if you just automatically add them to a list, uh, you're not going to be able to prove that. If we take a look actually in the uh, FAQs, the Canadian government has a beautiful website. Isn't that just 
Doesn't that just warm your heart as far as industrial design goes? But if you read through this, if you can bear to read through it, here's the issue in consent that I noticed. Consent can be obtained either writing or orally. In either case, the onus is on the person who is sending the message to prove that they've obtained consent to send the message. Okay, so you can say that they opted in, but you have to prove it. You can say that they verified orally by visiting, coming to the webinar, but you have to prove it. The onus is on you to prove it. Can you prove it? I guess that's the decision point that you're going to have to go through. What this does is it allows us to take a step back, look at our email strategy, and maybe clean up our practices a little bit and start paying attention to it. Uh, so one of the things that I'm going through uh, right now is I'm going into my subscriber list, and within each of my lists that I have in Aweber, I can filter those messages based on people who haven't opened my message since a certain date, any messages from me since a certain date. So I'm taking advantage of this for two reasons. I'm going back to the beginning of the year, to January 1st, so I'm going way back then. If you haven't opened one of my emails in that period of time, and they're from this list of uh, about five or 600 people, there's 54 subscribers who have never opened an email in the last, or never, who have not opened one of my emails in the last six months, essentially. I'm just going to I'm just gonna unsubscribe them and delete them from my list. Now, that does two things for me. First of all, it uh, means that I'm not sending out emails to people that probably aren't interested. Secondly, it also reduces the number of subscribers I have, which keeps me under the threshold of Aweber bumping how much they're charging me. So regardless of which email service you have, it's much better to have a smaller number of people who open your email than a whole bunch of email addresses going to dead accounts or people that aren't opening it. So this gives us an opportunity to kind of step back and prune our list, basically make it, bring it into shape and pay attention to it. Um, so bottom line, as far as this video today is concerned, is I want you to take a good hard look at your, first of all, your strategy, are, first of all, are you gathering email addresses? This video should in no way discourage you from building an email list. I still think it's the most important business process that we in the internet, uh, internet marketing, internet communications world can do, is we have to build that list because ultimately I want you to be uh, on my list so I have direct access to you, so I can invite you to my webinars directly, so that I can let you know about my new videos directly, and if I'm ever selling anything to you, that I can sell something to you directly. That's the relationship I ultimately want with you. And I, and if I, if I, uh, if I betray that trust by sending out too many messages uh, that are sales related, then you unsubscribe from the list. That's, that's fine, but the bottom line is I want the opportunity to communicate with you directly and not through a third party, be it Facebook or be it YouTube. I want ownership of that list. So that's number one. Make sure you're doing that, but make sure you're doing it in a legal, above board, conscientious manner and you're paying attention to where those subscribers live. Because now with the new Canadian anti-spam law, all Canadians are going to be looked at slightly differently by the rest of the internet marketing community. So that kind of wraps things up. A little bit less on YouTube today, a little bit more about the rest of the business practices, uh, but information which I believe is crucial for you to have. Uh, as a way of a perfect segue, there are three ways that you can stay in touch with us here at Dottotech. You can subscribe to this channel, which I hope you have already done. You can sign up for my newsletter, which is Double Opt-In, which I will send out at least once a week to you, where I send you a digest of all of the different videos that we've produced, as well as notification of all of the different webinars and special events that might be coming up, as well as potentially some courses and other things that we might decide to sell to you in the future. And finally, Dottotech is brought to you ad-free, at least as far as this particular vlog is concerned, through your generosity at Patreon. If you haven't checked out Patreon to see what it's, what's involved in being a supporter of Dottotech, I encourage you to do so. And if you are a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. You are the juice that keeps us going. That didn't sound right. You are you are the fuel that keeps Dottotech moving. You are you're awesome. We, 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 we thank you very much. And with that, I am done for today. Have fun storming the castle!